I lost my British accent, Toby. You never had it to begin with. I had a very good British accent. Pip, pip, hooray. Hello, Toby. I can't... Dude, I lost it. What's Toby? Toby? How are you doing, Toby? I lost it, man. Because we don't talk as much. I'm going to teach you how to speak English, Bobby, right? Okay. You say, air, hair, layer. Air, hair, layer. Yes, that's it, Bobby. That is how you speak posh, proper English. Air, hair, layer. Air, hair, layer. I got it, man. I'm there. got it, man. Thank you. (laughs) Congrats. I'll send you a certificate in the mail. What is up, everybody, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of the Nintendo PlayStation Podcast. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by my best friend in all the land, Toby Thornton. What is up, Toby? I'm glad I'm your best friend in all the land, Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of course Make sure you keep been. that straight. It's always been that way. Don't confuse it with anyone else, when no matter it? where they live. I, it's it's no more. I haven't done that anymore. It, it's, uh, it's been okay. you. You beat okay. you beat Sean out, and that's just the way it's been. Fair enough. Just, just I'm just saying, Bobby. Make sure you. There was that time. Remind, remind there was that yourself. time where that little feud was going between you two, and that's over. <laughs> it's done. No more, man. We don't do that no more. Yeah, all right. Good. You won the moniker, and, and you you wear the crown. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so how's your uh, two weeks been? Two weeks, yeah, it's been it's been pretty good, Bobby. Yeah, do anything yeah. interesting or? No. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> change any diapers? Yeah, I changed a few. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Like, to yesterday, I cut my grass. Yeah, out, yeah. The, out of the back. My garden is massive took me ages that's the sort of exciting stuff i get up to bobby but you know what? it's so satisfying when it's trimmed it's not satisfying it's it is not, man it's not it's not you look out there and you think i did a good job yeah my, my grass is it's like it's had a buzz cut a bit like your hair bobby it looks like that but green my hair looks rather nice <laughs> I'm like you're, I'm like you're quite, biggest, you've gone back to the quaff, and I'm not a yeah, fan it, of it. it. My grass looked like my hair before, and yeah. now it looks like your hair. So. Well, that's good. That's good. That's yeah. honestly, your grass shouldn't look like my hair. My hair is too short for your grass. <laughs> that means you have a lot of weeds. Is what it is. Well, I have got a few weeds. A lot. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> what are you it's... saying? You got weedy hair. Bob? <laughs> oh my god. So Toby. Let's kick this episode off like we do each and every episode with our geek outs. Yep, that's a good idea. Oh my god, you are such a douche. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what are you geeking out about, Toby? Uh, so I'm geeking out about Better Call Soul. It's back in my life, Bobby. Is it? Is it back? I'm, I'm wearing the t-shirt. Oh, I'm going to have to... Uh... Three episodes in. Oh man, i got to buy the season pass. I didn't realize it was back. Well, it's back, man. No, oh, man, I gotta pages. watch it. Okay, don't, I don't want to know nothing about it. No, no, no spoilers. Okay. Absolutely no okay. spoilers. Okay. But it's just as good as ever. And uh, also, I watched an episode of this thing called Big Mouth. Have okay. you ever seen that? No. It's, it's like a, a cartoon about uh, young adults going through puberty, and it's all over the top, stupid. There's a hormone monster that just comes out of nowhere, and it's just really funny, Bobby. And all the characters have got really big mouths. Is it so. a cartoon? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a cartoon. Oh, okay. yeah. How old are you, Toby? Bobby, seriously, it's an adult cartoon. Toby, it's Toby, so good. it's not good, Toby. It's, uh, stop. Just try it, Bobby. I'm not going to try it, Toby. You might like it. I'm not going to like it. I'm not, I'm not going to like it, Toby. I'm not going to like it. <laughs> you really need to work on that. I, dude, I lost it, man. I had three years of training and proper training, and it's gone now. Hey, Bobby, you're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, okay, anyway, uh, m- myself, I am geeking out. So there's t- I'm going to do two things. One was the fact that I did Nintendo Talk Live for, I would say, three and a half plus hours. 
with Joe After Work, Joseph Moran, and Jams. Um, we were at Next Level Games with Nick Militia. Um, it's a, it's available. You can go check it out on my YouTube channel right now. I'm going to get the audio version up probably today. Um, but, man, it was such a blast. And so awesome to meet them guys. Like, to spend, you know, that time with them. We went to dinner afterwards, hung out, and all that good stuff. But as great as that is, Toby, as great mm-hmm. as that is, this is even bigger for me. Really? I am so excited to have this thing in my hands. What are you going to pull out? What is this, Bobby? No way, Bobby! Mother, th- Mother 3, around. complete in the box, Japanese version. Dude, look at that. From Japan. Oh, gonna, that is, that I is haven't, very nice. I haven't even opened it yet, so I just want to open it. Don't open it. it. Yeah, don't man. Open it, it's already been don't, don't open it. Why? You've already got it. I want to see what's inside of it. Don't you want to see what's inside of it? No, I do not, Bobby. Do not open that. <laughs> it's been opened before. I don't care, Bobby. So anyway, right? So at yesterday at the block party that Nick Militia has, there's a there's a vendor that comes there, and he uh, he goes to Japan every year. His wife, mm-hmm. his wife's family, she's from Japan. His wife's family lives in Japan, so he goes there, you know, like every so often. And when he goes, he goes and buys up a bunch of Japanese games, and then brings them back to the United States, and then sells them at little shows like this. Well, the last time he was there. I bought Mother 2, complete in box. This time, I go up, he has Mother 3, complete in box. So I say to him, dude, I need the trifecta. Like, you gotta finish this off for me. Mm. So I was like, it, he goes, oh, I got Mother 3 here, and it's just a cartridge. I said, no, 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 come on, dude. No, we're not doing this. Go get me the complete in box. That's your mission. You go back to Japan, you get me the complete in box. I will, dude. I will. He, he said he will. So, I'm excited. And I'm like, yeah, I can't believe... That I got this. Like I've, I'm, this one to me is the mecca, just because of the fact of like, it's only been released in Japan. It's the box is perfect, dude. It looks immaculate. The box is per, dude. These these guys in Japan, they take care of their stuff, like legit. Like this thing is, I can't believe that this is like a what. A, a, a tw- almost a 20 plus year game and it looks this good it's insane. yeah and you know what it's card as well normally like people just throw away the card or it gets yeah. crushed or whatever yeah that's what i'm saying man it's like the, the cardboard package is perfect but what i like about it like if you look it shows all the different game boys you can play this on which is pretty yeah. which is pretty that awesome is i mean i mean it shows the ds it shows i guess the, the ds whatever so so when did it come out over there it doesn't even have a year on. I can't even read. I was going to say, like, if it's got the DS on there, Bobby, then that must be like. Oh, this is this is two thousand six. So that's like a re-release, or is that? Just... No, this is the actual game. This is the actual game that came out in two thousand six. So right. it's a it's a twelve year old game, twelve year old game. But mm. they, uh, you know, it, it. No, it originally released on the on the DS. All right. Okay. Well, the the uh, the Game Boy Advance. And then, but the Game Boy Advance, the original DS could play Game Boy Advance games. Yeah, so I was just wondering if it came out when the DS was already out on Game Boy Advance. Oh, that I don't, well, it must have because it because has 2006, pictures of it. Because 2006, yeah, it like, that must be it. around the same time. Because it's got the Game Boy Advance, it's got the Game GameCube, uh, the Game Boy Player with the GameCube on here. Because mm. um, it has that clamshell, that that SP Game mm-hmm. Boy right there, which is yeah. kind of cool. Um, I don't know, it's it's pretty awesome, dude. I'm I'm yes, it's I'm cool. excited for it. You know, I'm just like can't believe I got that thing. That thing is amazing, dude. I love it. I love it. So So are you just collecting your favorite games in from Japan? What or I, what is I, it just No, well, I for me Earthbound Mother has a very special place in my heart. And I don't mm. know what happened that that brought this on. Like I remember having Earthbound on the Super Nintendo when I was a kid. Um, and I didn't put a lot of time into it, but it always, like, for some reason, it always got me, like, wanting to go back and play it again, and I just always was excited to play it again, um, and then when it came out to the, on the Wii U, and I bought it, and I played completely through and beat it, 
it really, at that point, took on a different meaning for me because it was almost like I was reliving my childhood to yeah. some degree and a missing part of my childhood because it was something that I always regretted not beating, always something I regretted not going back to and beating. Mm-hmm. And then given the opportunity on, on the on the Wii U, I did do that. Um, and then it just became this weird thing where it was like, I just became obsessed with with Earthbound Mother. It was just like, this is crazy, dude. And so when they put out Earthbound Beginnings on the Wii U, I bought it. I didn't beat it because it's a, it's a really bad game. Yeah. Um, but, but Mother 3, I actually bought a translated version of that game. And I started to play it. And I was like, I stopped. And I was like, I don't know why I stopped. But I guess, well, I know why I stopped. I didn't like playing it on the uh, the DS that I had. I had like a DS yeah. Lite. And it was like, the screen is so small. And I'm like, oh, this is horrible to play it on. You can't really get the full sound of it. Because the music is amazing. Hmm. And um, so I just, I stopped. And I was like, I'm done. I'm not going to play it. Because there was also rumors uh, thanks, Emily Roberts. Uh, that that we we're gonna get it on the on the Switch. So mm-hmm. I was another reason I was like, all right, I'm just gonna stop playing this thing because it's coming to the Switch, and I'm gonna play it on the Switch where it's, where it's proper. Um, but I also bought the uh, the vinyl album from Nick mm-hmm. a while back, so I had that in the other room, um, which is awesome too. Like it's this big vinyl album. That I didn't even open that. It's got you know. So it's it's to me. It's not really collecting Japanese games. Like, I do grab Japanese games when I go to the next store occasionally. Because they're pretty cheap. They're relatively mm-hmm. cheap. But the games that I buy are typically games that I really enjoyed on the NES. Um, an example is, like, I bought Super Mario Bros. 3. And I bought Super Mario Bros. 2 mm. on the Famicom cartridges. Yeah. Um, I bought, on Super Famicom, I bought uh, Donkey Kong Country. Just mm-hmm. because that's like, they're games that I feel are very big in the United States, pivotal games. But I just buy the cartridges for them. Mother are the ones that I buy, like, I want complete in box. Yeah. Just because I love Japan so much, too, because of the yeah. quirkiness and stuff. And I would love to go one day. Me and Miguel mm-hmm. talk about it all the time. Um, but I just haven't gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm going. Probably in the next couple of years, I'll get there. And so this game, for some reason, is also this Japanese connection for me. Because Mother 3 is trapped in Japan to some degree. Mm -hmm. And it just feels like, man, that's my weird quasi-connection to Japan. It's stupid. And I know it's all in my head. But it's just something that like. me. Well, not really. I mean, like, you know, we both love Zelda, right? Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there was uh, Link's Awakening on Mm -hmm. the original Game Boy. Yeah. Well, the game that came before that, that kind of inspired Link's Awakening, was a game called For Frog the Bell Tolls. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a Japan exclusive. They never brought it out out over here. Um, But again, there's a fan translation of it. Okay. And it's, it's kind of similar. It's got some similar elements to it. There's like some of the music that's very, very similar to Link's Awakening. Mm-hmm. So that's the sort of game that I would like, you know, in the same way that you want the Japanese m- mother games that yeah. come out in yeah. America. So, yeah, I, f- I can see where you're coming from with that. I got something for you. Yeah. Because you and I have the same love for Zelda in terms of like our favorite Zelda game of all time. Is mm-hmm. the same. It hasn't changed for you, right? No, it's, it's still true. it's still linked to the past. Yeah. Okay. But I believe in a month or so, Nick Militia they started doing this uh, these speed runs in his store, and they yeah. they 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 stream them on Twitch. Mm-hmm. He brings all these stream runners in, and they do this. Nick is actually getting involved this time. Yeah, man. I remember he was tweeting about it a while ago. He's doing Zelda: Link to the Past. Wicked. And he's doing, but he's doing the Master Sword run. Right. Which is the, basically the beginning of the game, and you got to get the three pennants, and then you go up into the woods and, and get it. Um, so he said he's trying to do that in like 26 minutes, mm-hmm. which is pretty damn phenomenal, if you ask me. Yeah, like that, yeah. That's pretty, yeah. I think the world record, he said, was like 23 minutes mm-hmm. or something. Like, that's just madness. That, that yeah, it is. That. 
but um, the, the the issue with that is uh, the boss in at the top of the tower. I can't remember what it's called. The wormy snake thing. Mm-hmm. That, because that is such a luck based boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That if you get hit, you fall down and it regains all its health and you have to climb back up again. Yeah, like, yeah. The amount of speed runs I've seen that boss just screw over is insane. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. So, uh, real quick, quick, yeah, quick, kick, quick, quick, quick. Uh, what, what, what you been playing, Toby? Well, Bobby, I don't know if you can tell, but on the shelf behind mm. me are a couple of boxes. With uh, Shenmue 1 and Shenmue 2. And they just got re-released in HD, Bobby. So I am all in on Shenmue HD right now. Okay, so Shenmue HD, was that mm-hmm. only on the Xbox? Uh, well, so let's rewind, right? Back in the day, Shenmue 1 and 2 came out on the Dreamcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think Shenmue 2 came out in America, only when the Xbox came out, they mm-hmm. ported it to the, the original Xbox. <clears throat> and then after that, nothing. People have been asking for Shenmue 3 for a long time. Mm-hmm. It finally got announced at uh, the Sony press conference, I think it's 2015 maybe. Yeah, that's what they did. Uh, they did Kickstarter for it, and then they announced that they were remastering 1 and 2 in HD, which just came out the other day. And that's, I think that's on PC and PS4 and Xbox, I think, Xbox mm-hmm. One. I'm playing it on PS4 at the moment. Okay, okay. That's, I was curious where you were playing on that. I don't yeah. know if you were playing on your Xbox or, or someplace else. I um, play one game on my Xbox. PUBG? Just one. PUBG. Just PUBG. <laughs> I, it was funny because I was talking to uh, to Joseph and all them. and Because uh, Joseph likes to, like... Take a little little shot at you now and again. Whenever, no, really? <clears throat> yeah. Whenever, whenever we talk about the Nintendo PlayStation podcast, yeah. and he's like, "That's it's a great podcast." You know, you, you're the Nintendo guy, and I guess Toby's the Sony guy. And I'm like, "That's his little dig." That's because yeah. he he is the Sony guy. You know, he, so he gets all like ramped up. Yeah, like, yeah, I know Joseph, you mean. Yeah, I'm like Joseph. You'll never come on that show. You will <laughs> never be on that show. Don't it's banned. Don't, you're not coming on that show. So. uh but yeah, so so we were told about last night. I was like, "Toby bought an Xbox." I said, "He only bought it for PUBG." And to, mm. and and and, uh, and Joseph was like, "What what a horrible decision he made!" <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it's the best decision, man. Oh, my it's, God. it's all the Xbox is good for. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Sean's flipping out right now. Oh, no, Sean's yelling know. at you right now. I'm being silly, but yeah, show me you, right? Yeah. Oh, this game, like. I know it's not for everyone. Yeah. And the reason I love it is probably because I played it back in the day. Um, but it did some really cool things that kind of inspired the open world genre. Yeah. And I just love that you are the main character, Ryo Hazuki, and mm-hmm. you live his life. And it's so sort of entrenched in just real life design in the you can't skip time in the game there's a real time clock that's always mm-hmm. ticking you have to go around uh talk to people ask questions get leads you go into town you've got money you can spend money and you get allowance every day and it's just so much you know it sounds so benign like everything you can do in it like there's a kitten that is gets rescued and you could just go and pet the kitten for no reason like there's no in-game benefit really to doing it you can buy it milk and give it milk every day but it's just part of the world and it, yeah. it, it really sort of engrosses you in this world it makes it way more believable that you can do stuff like that i remember when this game got announced back in the day and the biggest thing that they made it the biggest thing that was said about it that the biggest deal that was made about it was apparently they had like nine stories like, not, they had it planned out to do, like, nine yeah. versions of the game. Not nine versions. Nine episodes of the game. Yeah. And, like, it, the game just never sold. It just never did good. Plus, yeah. Sega kind of just fell apart after that, and that kind of screwed things yeah. up a little bit. Um, but the thing of it is, is, like, it just amazed me when I heard that at the time. That, like, wow, these guys got the plans to do nine games. It's like Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it was... 
specifically nine games, but like nine chapters. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. the first the first two games are like five chapters worth. Oh, and okay, then, okay. So it's not like they had loads. Okay, so of that's games what it was planned, then. Okay, but, I misunderstood. Yeah, but um, it's just like really interesting. Like you can just go around your house and open drawers and cupboard doors. Nothing in them. Like occasionally there'll be a battery or something that you can pull out, but it's just. It's just all there to make the world believable. So is so okay. So you said that, and you're saying the one and two is basically five chapters. Do mm. you believe that they'll put the other four chapters in three? Yeah, the I think I think they're going to wrap it up because I don't think they're going to get get another chance. This to is make. it, basically. This is yeah, the, this is one shot. Yeah, because it's you know people have been clamoring for the story to be finished because it was sort of left at a cliffhanger at the end of the second game. Okay, so. It's finally happened with this Kickstarter, and if if free doesn't turn out to be as good as everyone hoped, oh, then it's not going the, to. The story's not, never going to end. It's, so. it's not going to. It's going to be horrible. I it's, don't know, man. It's I mean, going to be the I, worst the, game ever when it hits. And no, you back I it. just, I just think that it's going to be for Shenmue fans. It's, it's not going to be for new fans. Oh, no, not without a doubt. Without a mm. doubt, this game is not. It's fan service. It's all it is. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was put to Kickstarter, you know, and uh, it, it it met its mark very quickly and all mm. that. Um, I mean, I, for me, I hope that it, it pays off for you guys. Um, it does nothing for me. It's not a game I will buy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, for, for people that are fans of the series, like, it would suck for that thing not to pay off. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it'd be, be no different to me, like, to finally get to play Mother 3. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, damn, this sucks. I yeah. know, I know it doesn't because I started to yeah. play it. But like, if I had never played, and then they were like, okay, we're gonna put it out, and it's like you start to play, and like this is this is trash. Like, why was mm-hmm. I, why was I waiting for this for all this time? At least the advantage is, is I've heard stories about Mother Three, mm-hmm. so I know that like it's a good game. But like mm-hmm. in your place, like they're building the game, so you're you're just yeah. kind of like left there waiting. Yeah, like, I mean the thing is though, like I. I think that the story as you know it, the story is pretty integral to the games like you're on a journey um but like i was saying like most of it is just living in this world and doing stuff you know you can go around into the arcade and play super hang on yeah. and space harrier and darts and these little so this is basically games, animal like, crossing yeah this is an action-based Animal it's like, Crossing. It's like a 1980s Animal Crossing. <laughs> I mean, really, ultimately it is because you get the real-time clock. And you were yeah. saying to me, like, there's certain chores you have to do at certain times. Yeah. Like, of day and stuff. And, like, that's like Animal Crossing. Yeah, you, you can't sleep until 8 o'clock in the evening. So you've got to fill your time, you know, just talking to people, exploring go into the bar That's you can you awesome. can you can go to like vending machines and just buy cokes and drink the coke no benefit doesn't do your health any good D- doesn't do anything like occasionally you'll get a winning can that you can take into a corner store and you get a free raffle ticket for a pachinko toy like a capsule oh toy my God. so you know it's just stuff like that man i just love it That's kind of, that sounds kind of cool yeah. I'll never play it, but it sounds cool. <laughs> it sounds cool, but I'm not interested. <laughs> sounds like sounds like garbage. No, <laughs> um, for me, I just been and I'm not gonna get into this because I've talked about it all week. Um, just been playing Dead Cells, been playing the hell out of that game. I love it to death. Um, also, so okay, so I want to throw this at you mm-hmm. because we we talked about it a little bit privately. Um. This this regalia game, yeah. Are you down with buying it and doing a review with it, or do you not want to do that? Um, I'm still thinking about it. Okay. Like, it looks like a really good game. I looked at the the uh, listing page for it, watched the trailer, mm-hmm. and it you know it's like a turn based strategy game. Yeah, man. Um, but the graphics are really nice. This sort yeah. of like anime style, but like you know. The isometric top-down yeah. grid-based thing, like which I am really into. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll maybe we'll take a little venture into that. I don't know. We'll mm. look at it. Um. So there's that. Okay. So yeah, I've been playing, like I said, a lot of Dead Cells, 
Um, a little bit of bomb chicken here and there. Which is a, what do you think of bomb chicken, man? I think it's a good game. I, I, I think it's uh, I didn't get a whole lot of time into it, but I probably put about four or five hours in. Um, mm-hmm. Just tinkering here and there. Um, I like it. I like the mechanic. I like the idea of like you, you, you basically hatch bombs out your bum yeah. and you yeah. get up to where you got to go. And then, um, you know, it's it's the weird thing that oh, I always that always gets me is I forget like one hit you're dead. So yeah. like, you like you run into a spike and then boom he explodes or you, you put too many bombs under yourself to get to a level and yeah. now you can't get to that level and then all the bombs start blowing up underneath you and then boom you blow you up it's it's kind of it's kind of quirky and cool like I like mm. I like how the uh, how it all works out and stuff I I love like finding the secrets in that game though that's that's what I get out of it because yeah. you know you you try and collect all the gems in each level and. At the end of the level, you might, you know, you'll see the little icon at the top. If it's green, that means you've not collected them all. Yeah. So you go back in and you search the entire level and you find these little hidden passages and bombable walls and stuff. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah. cool. You see, you're <clears throat> you're more into that type of game, I think, than me. Like mm-hmm. you love the Box Boy. Yeah. And and that's very similar to Box yeah. Boy. In yeah. my in my opinion, anyway. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so there's always always that stuff. Speaking of which, you know what, man? I gotta go through my boxes. I gotta, I know I have a box boy amiibo. Still yeah, I was gonna box. say like I gotta get that out. Good. I got so many amiibo that I got a whole box of amiibo that I didn't open. I'm gonna do that today. Get yeah, the rest I can't of the amiibo. They just they sold you a cube in a in a, a cube in a cube, <laughs> and you paid for it. <laughs> a lot of money too. It wasn't like it was yeah, cheap. It wasn't like it came to the United States and I paid like retail. I mm. imported that bad boy. Um, speaking of importing, I imported a baseball game this week. Um, Was that RBI baseball, but in Japanese? No, 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 no. It looks like RBI baseball. No, it does not. It looks nothing like RBI baseball. Trust me. What is it then? Explain it to me, Bobby. It's a Japanese baseball game. It's based on Mm -hmm. real, like, real Japanese teams, so it's licensed. I don't Mm -hmm. even, the only only Japanese team I know is the, uh, the, the, the Yankees, um, Yankees are in Japan. Very, very Japanese. Yeah. And uh, so, but <clears throat> they, um, it is it looks, realistic? No, no. It's, it's kind of cartoony. Um, yeah. The only thing that scares me is I'm not really going to know how to, like, it's going to take me a little bit to learn how to play. Mm-hmm. I mean, baseball's baseball. But what I mean by that is, like, if there is a story mode, because a lot of these Japanese baseball games have story modes built into them. Meaning, mm-hmm. like, you start out in the minor leagues, and then you have to perform these tasks. And as you do, you get power ups and stuff, and you you advance yourself through your career, and then you move up to the, you know, to the majors. Speaking, and... speaking of story modes, I finished Golf Story. Did you really? Yeah. What did you think? I thought it was good. I thought it ended a bit abruptly. I wanted there to be like a New Game Plus type thing, but mm-hmm. no, there's nothing like that. So, but yeah, that's like. Sports RPG. That should be a genre, like a proper genre. Can can I go back and finish my story now? Yeah. yeah you, sure. What was that all about, man? I'm just. I'm just. <clears throat> nobody cares I'm... about you finishing Golf Story. Yeah, they do. Man. No, they don't. Yeah, they, people and... love Golf Story. <laughs> nobody loves this Japanese baseball well, game. No, my point is, my point is, is, if I get to the point where like there is a story mode. I'm not going to know what to do. No, you ain't. Because <laughs> I'll be like, I don't know what he's saying. I think he You'd said, to, like, he probably told me to bunt in this in this particular instance, and I'm going to be swinging away, and I'll get out, and I'll get yelled at. Yeah, you'll be sitting there with Google Translate, like, trying to figure it all out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, all right, let's jump into our, our topics here, Toby. What, mm. uh, I'll, let, I'll let you, uh, you know, I'm going to go first. I don't care. Yeah, you go first. Yeah, I'll go first this time. <laughs> so... Legend of Zelda. We're both big fans of this this series mm, and, and all huge that. Huge fan. Yeah. So my question to you is, what are your hopes for the next Zelda game? Mm-hmm. Like, and what I mean by that is, I don't want you to go like, oh, I want. I mean, if that's what you want, that's fine. But like, I'm not looking for you to go like, I want Breath of the Wild. Blah, blah, blah. Like, there's a lot of rumors swirling right now. Okay, and I like rumors, so, especially Zelda rumors. So there's rumors of Zelda 2 getting remade and ported over. There's rumors of Skyward Sword being ported over. 
There's rumors of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker making their way over. Um, there's also rumors that there's a brand new Zelda game in the works. And mm-hmm. so my question to you is, if you had your, if you had the opportunity to go into Nintendo, if you ran Nintendo, Toby, and you got the opportunity to go in there and say, this is what the next Zelda game will be. Oh. Out of everything you're right. working on right now, what would right. what would your fantasy pick be? All right, so I'm torn in two directions mm-hmm. with this. Because, uh, you know, as you said earlier, Link to the Past, favorite Zelda game. I love the top-down Zeldas. Mm-hmm. Link Between Worlds is another favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. Link's Awakening, so, so good. Like, so... You know, I've got a craving right now for another top-down Zelda. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to be able to go in and just say, make another top-down Zelda that's just full of puzzles, that's bigger than A Link Between Worlds. But, Bobby, what would be more interesting right now, I feel, peeking behind the Nintendo curtain, is I would say, make me a open-world 3D Zelda. It's got a look like the Wii U Zelda tech demo. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, back, back up, back up. Say this again. A 3D open world Zelda. Okay. That looks like the Wii U Zelda tech demo. So you want a realistic looking Zelda. Realistic, like gritty, hardcore looking Zelda, right? Because mm-hmm. we're doing what we did before, right? You had Wind Waker... People lashed out at the art style. Along come Twilight Princess. Mm -hmm. Classic Zelda look. People love both. You know, people maybe love Wind Waker more. But, you know, I want the same thing to happen again. Breath of the Wild, beautiful art style. I've got a craving for that realistic Zelda Mm -hmm. again. So, I want Breath of the Wild world, Mm -hmm. but looks like gritty, realistic Zelda. But, the dungeons in it are just traditional hardcore Zelda dungeons with items that have specific puzzles. You know, it's not like you've got the entire kit at the start of the game. Mm-hmm. I want you to be able to find items. Mm-hmm. But it has to be open world. So yeah. you can do the dungeons in any order you like. Yeah. Maybe there are hints to what you need. Maybe you get, there aren't hints. Maybe you go into a dungeon, you come across a puzzle that you can't get past, and you have to come back later Metroidvania style. Mm. mm mm Interesting, interesting. Um, for me, I definitely go the way of top down uh, for mm. the next one, but because there was that rumor um, that there was supposed to be a top down Zelda for the 3DS that was mm-hmm. supposed to happen. Yeah, I remember. Um, and nothing ever came out of that. Never, never happened. So for me, I would love to get a top down Zelda on the Switch. HD graphics, mm-hmm. um, very. I wouldn't even mind if they if they did kind of what they did between Link Between Worlds and and kind of borrowed the map of a Link to the Past. Um, but also, I probably no, Bobby. It's got to be a new map. You can't have that map again. You, I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to say the words, and you just cut me off. Bobby, you literally just said I wouldn't mind if they use the same map again. I. Well, let me finish my thought, man. Ooh, go, ahead, go ahead. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't mind if that was the version that they used, but I feel like that's kind of cheating to some degree. So I feel like if you're going to do a brand new game, because because here's the thing: the rumor was that they were borrowing the assets from that link to the pet or link between worlds to create mm-hmm. this. So my feeling is, if that's the case, then this is going to basically be. Of a, a clone of sorts. I would like them to just go like, okay, we're going to borrow the assets, but the map is going to change. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't mind if it looked like Link Between Worlds. Well, just, yeah. Just HD graphics, yeah. but then change the map. You know what I mean? Like, So if they it... do a Majora's Mask type thing, where they use the same assets of Ocarina of Time, mm-hmm. but the map is different, the dungeons are different. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. I would, would also, cool. I would also like them to, because it's on the Switch and it's more powerful and it can do more, would love for them to voice act this game. Like, do what you did with Breath of the Wild, but take it further. 
Yeah, maybe. I would like more voice acting than Breath of the Wild. I love the voice acting in Breath of the Wild. It gets a knock by people, and I'm sick of that. But I love the voice acting. I thought they did a great job. Mm -hmm. I thought the king was amazing. I thought he was really good, really well done. I didn't mind Zelda. I thought Zelda was very well done. Um, I thought she played a great role, the woman that played her. I thought it was I thought it was fantastic. I loved mm -hmm. it. Um, Impa was great. Like I thought she great voice, great voice acting. So I would love all that. And he, have he, have you got? Them, yeah, have you got any sort of gimmick idea? To what would make this game stand out? Like the painting, like the walking on the walls from Link. The only thing that I could think in my mind, this is the <laughs> truth, the thing that would be the coolest, um, I wish this game would be called A Link to the Past 2. Mm -hmm. Now hear me out here. And there would be a mechanic where you know how in the original you can go between the dark and the light world? Mm -hmm. This you would go between the future and the past. Yeah. And when you went to the past, it looked 8-bit-ish. Right. Or maybe old style. Right. Um, just give it some type of flair that makes it feel like it's an older version of Zelda. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the future or your present time or whatever it mm -hmm. is, it's that HD look and that feel mm -hmm. to it to me yeah. that would be the mechanic that would be awesome meaning like you go in maybe there's a small tree there and then when you shift the trees are big and full and all yeah. that stuff that would yeah be... i love i love stuff like that like yeah. if they had uh like a three different eras maybe make it a bit yeah that would be that would too. well that would be good too you know what i mean mm. if you did do if you did like a link to the past look I wouldn't even mind if they went and they went, like, old-school top-down Zelda, like the original top-down mm -hmm. Zelda. Um, just dress it up a little bit, because they could dress it up a little bit. Um, that would be, like, the classic classic. Then they did Link to the Past, that type of look. And then they do the HD graphics for the, the present time or whatever. Well, or or even, if, even if the game starts in the Link to the Past feel, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can go to the past and the future. And when you go to the future, it's the HD graphics. And that, to me, would be unbelievable. I would. I think I would rather keep it the same art style for each era. Just have the eras look different. Yeah. You know, like disheveled. Or if, or if, like... uh, what if, what if they did something where like the colors were the way it was? So the past was like almost black and white, or like a noir mm -hmm. look. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like the middle ground was like. Um, like a pastel ish look, and then the future was like vibrant colors and stuff. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, I really love the dungeon in Skyward Sword where you've mm -hmm. got the like those stones that light up and they show the past, mm -hmm. and then you you can move the stone around in the three D environments, and that solves like changes the environment to solve puzzles. So I really love stuff like that. Yeah. So being able to switch between timelines and I think there's a lot of clever stuff that you could do. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it would be a lot of fun. But that would be my, my ultimate goal to see happen. Like, I would love that to death. You know what? Like, if they had a top-down Zelda, I'd love them to have a mode that's like the randomizers, like Zelda randomizer, where all the chests have random stuff in. So mm -hmm. every time you play the game, it feels different and you've got to really learn the game inside out. So I think that would, people would get a lot of replay value out of an official randomizer. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. That'd be d yeah. different, you know? I mean, because that's the thing, like, I mean, you know, like, we, we play it, we talk about it in the past, stuff like Heist and, and Dig. Like, that's what made me go back to Dig so often was because of the fact of, like, you play the game once, you beat the game, and then you go back the next time, and it randomly just moves all the gems and stuff to different yeah, areas. Yeah. And it's like, so each playthrough is never the same, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I love that stuff. I think it's, it, I think it's, phenomenal when they do that stuff so um all right so what's uh what is your topic there toby all right so since i'm playing the shenmue hd collection oh, we're going yeah. back to this okay. <laughs> uh, i just wanted to know like what you thought made for a good remaster like what does a game have to have to make it a decent worthwhile remaster so i thought about this when you said this and uh the first thing i instantly thought was wind waker 
Mm-hmm. And I thought, like, I remember playing Wind Waker back in the day, and it, yeah. it got some knocks, but it got some deserved knocks. And when they remastered the game, they fixed that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think that's number one. Um, besides the fact of, like, the glitz and the glam and making it look gorgeous, I think you need to fix what's wrong with the game. Like, if mm-hmm. there was problems with the game, fix it. You know, yeah. like, I look at a game like, uh, what is it, uh, Colossus. What's that? Word? Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus. Like, a lot of people thought that game, I remember Holly talking about that game when, when we had the geek cast and how much she loved that game and how cool it was and all that stuff. And when I listened to it, I was like, that sounds pretty awesome. So when they remastered that game, I was like, I'm, I'm going to get it. But then when the reviews started coming out, people were like, the controls are the same. They feel old. They feel mm. dated. And it's like, man, if, if we've made advances in things, change them. It'd be no different than, like, yeah. if they if they remaster Mario 64, right? Mm-hmm. If they turn around and they go, we're going to remaster Mario 64. And they just make it look pretty. And they ship it with a GameCube controller. And they go, okay, the camera's going to be the same. The camera's horrible. Yeah. You've, you've made advances. You've yeah. made it better. So I implement a new camera to it, you know? They they can do things like it to a certain extent. Like, you can make it, uh, like like you say, like, the Mario 64 camera is atrocious, yeah, right? Yeah, horrible, yeah. So they could fix that. But if they changed the way Mario moved and made it like more like Mario Galaxy, for instance, mm-hmm. then I think that would fundamentally just change how the game feels. Of course, of course. And I'm not looking so, for that. But I'm saying, like, here's here's an example. If, if, if you're... Let's say that back, um, and I'm just going to use this, this isn't what I'm saying at all, but this is an example. Um, let's just say that 10 years ago, mm. every game at that time used, for PlayStation, the triangle button, the top button to jump, right? And then the last three years, five, well, the last five years, they go, oh, we've, we've changed it. Now it's the X button to jump. Mm-hmm. And everybody realizes, like, that's the perfect way to play right then they remaster this game and they go back and triangle is the jump button again and yeah. it's like that's yeah i understand what you're stupid. saying there, yeah. like why would you not just make it what yeah, everything is I today and that's, that's where, I have where the issue. that's where options come in because a lot of good remasters have the option of a classic control scheme and a modern control scheme yeah, yeah. or like maybe even the graphically like shemu has old graphics where there's no anti-alias in there's lots of jagged edges mm-hmm. you know you can change the aspect ratio back to four by three or you can have full widescreen with smoothed out edges like mm-hmm. all the diagonals are like perfectly straight yeah and like i think like having that option just to change that so if you really want to experience it how it originally was yeah. but just on your modern tv mm-hmm and it looks good, like then you can do that, like pixel perfect mode or whatever. Yeah, like, well, you look at uh, Wonder Boy on the on mm. the on the. I don't know if you played that game, but you can. No, but I, yeah, you could flip between yeah. the old school eight bit graphics, which is horrible. Like I yeah. don't even have it. It's <laughs> so ugly. Like yeah. I love, I you know, I love pixel art. The the artist on that game should should be ashamed of that game. That game is horrible looking. Um, but then when you shift to this beautiful art hand drawn yeah. style, it's like, oh my god, this thing is gorgeous. So yeah, yeah. that's uh, a great example because that game, although you have these two completely different art styles, the game plays identically no matter yeah. which way you do it. Yeah. So it looks like a modern game, but the jumps and everything are the exact same as they were on yeah. the original. So that's like really, really good for the creator's intent side of it. See, I think too, like, it's funny because I, I, I had this argument with people and then I think about Wonder Boy and I'm like, the one thing I think about Wonder Boy, the hard thing about it is there's no checkpoints in it. So it drives mm-hmm. me crazy when you play mm-hmm. it. But back then, there were no checkpoints in it. But then, yeah. like, I talk to people that play, like, the new Mega Man games, like the collections, yeah. and they have these rewind features in them or save states put in them. Yeah. And I get mad when people utilize them. Because I'm like, that's not yeah. how we played back in the day. But then, yeah. like, I want it in Wonder Boy. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's weird. But I think that, like, that is, I like to, to give the option. You know what I mean? Like, you could play this game. Like, we played it back in the day with no save states and stuff yep. like that. Or, you 
you take advantage of this rewind camera or this, this, you know, whatever. Like, you have these cool little things that they build into the games today that are yeah. kind of neat. And I think that kind of makes remasters fun as well. Is yeah. when they when they take advantage of like, hey, this is something that happened back then, and you can you you can just play it in the raw form, or we're gonna add this cool new feature to it. And if you want to take advantage of, it, you take advantage of. It. If you don't, you just leave it as it is. So mm-hmm. that's kind of that's kind of cool too. Yeah, like the uh, Final Fantasy twelve remaster on PS4. Yeah. That's got a fast forward function. Oh, okay, and you can you can fast forward it so many times that you're just literally just zipping around the world like a lightning speed oh, and that makes all the, the battles just go by instantly it's really good for like when you're on autopilot and you're leveling up your characters mm-hmm. you can skip cutscenes. there's lots of like quality of life changes where you know if you've already played this game or maybe if you haven't really got the time for a massive rpg you can yeah. still sort of blitz through the game yeah um so that's kind of something I wish Shenmue did, actually, is that mm-hmm. in the second game, there's a feature where you can look at your watch and you can fast-forward time. Okay. So if if you are waiting for an event to happen and you don't want to go and play Pachinko or, you know, whatever it is, yeah. then you can just sit there and look at your watch. And Shenmue 1 never had that, and they haven't put that in from the second game. Uh... So that's something that they could have done to make the game just a little bit more... Like up to date. So when you say you're playing Shenmue, are you playing? So you start at one and you're playing through one yeah. first, and then when you yeah. beat that, you'll go on to two. Yeah. Is that right. your goal? Your goal is to beat both of them. Yep, yeah, and then move on to three next year. Hopefully, when it comes out. In yeah. 20, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Twenty twenty one. They announced the release date the other day of I think August twenty seventh, twenty nineteen, and I think like that's a year away. Like no there's way. no no way. Like if they're announcing it this early and they've already delayed it several times it's like yeah. i don't think they realize they'll never, they'll never hit that date no. <laughs> never hit that date it ain't gonna happen um and the, and the thing i think you gotta well i think you gotta worry about with sony sony could cancel that game altogether and then you're no kinda, no no they're not doing that i'm just saying the possibility no, they piss a lot of people off though. I don't think they would do it. I think yeah. they would take I think they would take a loss before they Yeah, it's just it. like a goodwill gesture, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um Are there any other like and that's okay, so like I wasn't a fan of the Twilight Pin- Princess remaster. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know why I wasn't. It just didn't feel that much yeah, I mean, better. I feel like they did less to that game than they did with Wind Waker. Yeah. Like Wind Waker got much more attention with yeah. things. Like, yeah. You know, they updated, they added like all the fancy bloom lighting in Wind Waker, mm-hmm. and they chopped down the uh, the trifles hunt quest, mm-hmm. things like that. But Twilight Princess is much more fateful. Like they didn't do hardly anything to the very beginning of the game, where everyone said the tutorial drags. You know, it's just like a HD pretty version of that game, and I feel like they could have done a little bit more with it. If now, here's a question for you, and this is off a little off top topic, but on topic. If they brought one HD Zelda to Switch, either mm-hmm. Wind Waker or Twilight Princess, which would you prefer they brought? Oh boy, that's a really difficult choice. Because, you know, I love Wind Waker so much, Mm -hmm. but it annoys me that they didn't finish the game in terms of dungeons. Like, I feel like Twilight Princess is much more complete in that respect, Mm -hmm. and the dungeons are my favorite part of any Zelda game. Yeah. So I think I'd probably say bring Twilight Princess. Dude, spoilers, but man, when you get to Hyrule, oh my god... In, that, which, in Wind Waker. In, well, all right, yeah. That moment where you get to win. Yeah, the that's a it's like, special moment. It's yeah. like, oh my god! Because the whole time I'm playing, I'm thinking like, okay, I'm playing Link from Hyrule. It's you know, and I'm in, I'm in a quasi weird Hyrule now. But when you actually go and you're like, oh my god, this is it. I want, I want. That's what I want. That's what I want the next level to be. I want Wind Waker two, but I want to be playing Wind Waker graphics. In that high roll, like I yeah, want that high I'd roll. Like that. that would be amazing. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I lo- I love the combat actually in Wind Waker. Yeah. And like the high, the whole like musical aspect of when you're hitting the enemies and it, it times it with the music, and it's it's it seems much more fluid than Twilight Princess. So, I think of Uncharted, the Uncharted mm-hmm. collection as well. 
Hmm. And now I never played the originals. You played the originals. Yeah. But I thought that collection was really well done. It was, um, yeah. I don't think that they made too many changes to the original, if no. any at all. I think they just updated I, I the think, graphics. I'm not sure. I think they might have sorted the frame rate out. Well, of course. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. That's Which it. is, you know, if they can do that, as long as it doesn't make the game feel too weird, then yeah. why not? Like, um, Are there any other remasters you've played recently? Um, there was, there's a remaster, uh, of a PS3 game, um, it's that, what's it called? It's the, uh, the GTA type one set in China. Oh, is it the Yakuza? No, it's not Yakuza, it's, it's like that, but... Oh, it's, I'm totally blank. It's like true. It's like a true crime game. Oh my you know, god! Like I know what you're talking undercover about. Undercover detective guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god! Sleeping, it's... sleeping dog. Yes, 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 yes. And that was like one of the first remasters on PS4, mm-hmm. and it got a lot of backlash because they didn't change anything. Yeah. It's just exactly the same as it is on PS3. But it's a really good game, and I just like being able to play games on modern hardware. What do you think about? this Dark Souls remaster coming? Uh, I mean, are you, not, you're not even a fan of Dark Souls I'm not a fan of Dark Souls, so I don't really have any. Have you ever played that. a Dark Souls game before? No. No. I've watched people play them, but yeah, no. Just has no interest for you. Yeah, yeah I, I, don't think I'll, I don't think I'll get that game. What about Diablo, though? Diablo I'm game. very interested in Diablo. Very interested in Diablo. Like, I, I, I'm i buying it day one when it hits the Switch. Um, that That's, the, you know, like, that's the type of game that, like, for me... There's not a whole lot to change with that. You just yeah. kind of you you would to me. I would just update the graphics a little bit, you know, make it. Mm-hmm. But, but I've got an it's... example of a bad remaster. Okay, it's the Arkham Collection. Yes, they did nothing to it. They did nothing, but they well, they did do something. They, they updated changed, the graphics. That's it. They changed the color palette. Yeah, like if you put the games side by side to the originals, they look totally different, yeah. and I think that completely spoils the experience. Yeah, I didn't. I I bought that game, and I was just like, they didn't really do anything to this. They didn't, you know. It was like they just made it HD. That's all. They just mm-hmm. basically made it HD for, and, and put it on PS4 and Xbox One. That's all it was mm-hmm. for, really, because those games were Xbox Three and and I mean Xbox, yeah, Xbox 360 and PS3, PS3 games. Yeah. And uh, and I'm a huge fan of that series. Huge fan of that series. And they just kind of like to me dropped the ball on it all. I just was disappointed. But yeah, you know what though, right? I, um, with the PS4 Pro, right, the fact that a lot of old games are getting patches to make them look a bit better and run a bit better. Mm-hmm. They have these like souped up, powerful modes. I want like the next the PS5 like to have the ability to just put your game in, whether it's a PS4 game or not, mm-hmm. and it just upgrades it a bit so yeah. the frame rate out just automatically like i don't want to have to rebuy these games as remasters over and over like i don't yeah, want to, have to buy shim you again for ps5 yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah there should be there should be an ability to bring these games forward and it just be a quick update and it just yeah. it, it, it fixes things or that... e- even if it doesn't fix anything i just want it to play on the ps5 like, yeah sick of buying games over and over yeah it's <laughs> It's, well, welcome to Nintendo World because that's basically yeah. what they're doing right now. So that is all. Thank you guys for listening to us over here on the Nintendo PlayStation Podcast. If you want to follow Toby, check him out on the Twitters at Toby's underscore take. You can follow me at Nintendo Gurus. Go to NintendoGurus.com. Check out everything we're doing over there. Um, that is all. Peace out, Preston. Ciao. It's a pretty quick ciao. Ciao. It was very. That was not you. Woo yeah!
Okay, so you got my topic, right? Yeah, I got your topic. Okay, and I got yours. Okay, so season two, episode three. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. What is up, everybody, and welcome to the Nintendo PlayStation Podcast. Oh, f- <clears throat> I just said what the seasons and shit was, and I screwed yeah, it up. Man. Oh, such a dick. Um, <laughs> Agreed. 